Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Rocco and I work within Daz 3D and do these little tutorial videos to help people out with their own renders and workflow. Uh, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to be taking a look at HDRI lighting, find out what it is, why we should use it, and then what all the little sliders do amongst other things in all the settings. Uh, now this is the first in a number of videos that I'm going to do on HDRI lighting or environmental lighting as it's more widely known. Uh, and here what we're going to look at, as I said, is just the basics, uh, but in later videos we're going to delve into things like lighting indoor scenes with HDRI and such, which I know is something that a few people have problems with. Uh, so if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and hit the little notification bell so that you don't miss those videos and any others that I do when they do drop. Right then, HDRI, what's that? Uh, HDRI is an acronym for High Dynamic Range Image which is basically posh talk for, for having an image that not only shows the colours and the pixels that you would expect to see in an image, but it also has encoded within it the lighting and exposure data that we need to be able to light our scene with it. Uh, now what this actually means therefore is that the HDRI image, or the environment map as it's sometimes called as I mentioned earlier, is not just a background for our scenes if we choose to use it as one, but it also provides all the lighting for our scene that matches what we actually see in the image itself. Uh, think of it as an all-in-one uh, ready-made lighting system where you basically get you know, what the image shows. Now, what we're actually seeing here uh, is the default HDRI image that exists within DAS 3D. Uh, it's all a load of coloured blotches and smudges as you can see here because the image that it's actually based on is very is a very low resolution image. Now the thing that, uh, that's really important to notice here is all these light bits that you can see all of those are actually going to act as lights within our scene. In fact, all of it's going to act as lights in our scene, but the real bright things are the things that are really going to be going out and lighting up our character and our scene if and when we add one of those in there. Now, for us to use a HDR image, what we actually need to do is two things. Firstly, we need to come across to the render settings and come down to the environment section. And on environment mode, we need to be either set to dome only, as which I am set as there, or we need to be on dome and scene, which is the other option that we've got. Dome actually stands for uh, the dome with which the HDR image is painted upon. Uh, now on dome only, the only light that you'll get in the scene is from the HDR map. Uh, or emissives if you include emissives in your scene. Uh, I have did a video recently on emissives if you want to check that out you can check it out in the top right hand corner there. Uh, whereas on dome and scene uh, we use the dome which is the HDR map, we can use emissive lighting as, as normal uh, but we can also as well include spotlights and point lights if we wish to also. Uh, the second thing that we need uh, to be able to do an HDR map is of course a HDR image uh, and as I mentioned this is the default image that uh, you can actually see in our viewport there. As you can see it's really low resolution hence why you get all it's just smudges and blotches and things it doesn't really uh, show any detail. Now, if we just close down the render settings a moment and drop into our scene a model, you can see that she's lit up with the light uh, that is present there within our HDR map. And if we just spin around for a moment, you can start to see the relationship between the, the light part in the image and the uh, the rest of the light in, in the HDR image. If you look at this direction, you can see there's a really big bright white light source just over here that I'm circling with my cursor. You know, and that's that relates to the brightness side, the brighter side of our, our model's body as she stands there. She's lit up all around because there's light and all around in this scene, but uh, you can see how the, the HDRI image and the, the certainly the bright bit in over in that direction lights up that side of her body more so than the rest of the image. Now we can get HDRI images uh, or environment maps to use within DAS 3D from a number of different sources. Uh, we can make them ourselves uh, in a, a paint package, it's easy enough to do and I'll do a video on that in the future. Uh, we can buy them from the DAS store itself or other you know, stores around the internet like Renderosity and things like that. Uh, but the main source really is you can just get them off the internet free of charge, no charge whatsoever uh, from various different places. Now on screen here you can see where I get all of my HDRI maps from. Uh, it's hdrihaven.com. Uh, you'll be able to find a link down in the description below along with all the other links to assets in this video. Uh, but when you come across the HDRI Haven you can see there's just, you know, 
hundreds of different HDRI maps that you can use uh, in your scenes within DAS. Uh, all different things, outdoors, nighttime, studio shoots, you know, morning sunsets, all different things that you can do. Uh, they're all free of charge, just download them uh, as you see fit. Uh, and if you have a look down, you can, you can see that they're really high resolution as well, which is good because they'll give you a nice crisp background if you want to use the, back, the, the image itself as a background in your scene. Now, once you've got your HDRI map that, that you want to use, you come back into DAS, onto your render settings, and make sure, as I say, that you're on dome only or dome and scene. And then we come down to uh, the environment map where we have that image. Click on the image, go to browse, and then go to where you downloaded the image to. And in this case, this is mine, and I'll give it a double click to load it in. Now, as you can see on environment map there, the image itself has changed. And this is the image that I've downloaded. So now if we just shut that down again a moment and just come across to NVIDIA iRay, we can see that the image has been loaded in and we've got a nice little open area uh, lit up by the sun up there. Uh, nice little daylight scene, lots of trees, lots of, uh, well, like a few buildings. Uh, and all the light in there for that we're going to have is going to be included in this image. And so now if we include our character once more, we can see that she's been plonked in the middle of this field, lit up by the daylight sun. Uh, nothing else needs to be done. That's that's all that really needs to be done. There's a few extra details that we're going to be taking a look at, but that's your basic HDRI setup. Put the map in, put your character in, and then she will be lit up by the light and that's in contained within that HDR image that you've downloaded. Now, when it comes to the options that we have with HDRI, uh, a good number of them that you can see there and a few more that we could bring up uh, will either only impact on our render very subtly that we barely notice any change unless you're really, really looking for it. Uh, it will only impact in certain circumstances or we'll just barely use the majority of them. Uh, so to prevent this video being overly long with barely usable information within, uh, I'm only going to mention the, the ones that you'll probably get to use at some point and you will use quite regularly and we'll skip over the rest for now. I might touch on them briefly, but we'll skip over the rest for now. Uh, I will be doing future videos on HDRI, so I might touch on the odd one there, but uh, if there's anything that you really want to know about, just mention it down below in the comments and I'll get back to you there when I can. So starting from the top then, we know about environment mode. Uh, ignore dome mode for now, it's not that important, you won't notice much change. Uh, draw dome just determines whether or not we can see the background and we can actually see the HDRI. If we turn it off, you can see that it turns the background off. You still get the light, but it does actually turn off the dome and the HDR image in the background. So if we turn it back on now, uh, if you come to environment intensity and environment map, now personally I don't know why there's two different sliders for this. Uh, if you do know, drop it in the comments below because I would be curious as to know. But basically what these do is they determine the brightness and the, the, the exposure amount of the light that comes from the HDRI. Now these two sliders themselves are actually multiples of the same thing. So for instance, uh, two and two two on intensity and two in environment map uh, will create that type of lighting. But that is the same as doing one and four. Uh, so that is actually the same light. So they are multiples. So whatever them two numbers multiply up to, that's going to be the brightness setting that you've got. Uh, if we just go back down to two there. Environmental tint, uh, that just allows us to tint the light slightly. Uh, if we just put a green tint on that, you can see uh, she'll come out now with a green tint. Uh, the light and exposure levels will be the same, but just that colour tint, uh, you know, we'll just colour the light in that way. Uh, we can ignore light resolution and light and blur. This is a weird one because sometimes it works on a HDR map, other times it doesn't. Uh, on this particular map, it doesn't seem to do anything. But what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to add a little blur effect to the to the background and the HDR that you see in the background over here, kind of mimicking a little bit of uh, depth of field. Uh, now, it works well on low resolution uh, images that you use, but on this high resolution one, it doesn't seem to work. Uh, but one thing that you do want to do, uh, if I just highlight my camera for a moment over here, uh, you do actually want to add a little bit of depth of field into your images because what it does is it it makes the 
three-dimensional model that you've got there kind of blend a little bit better with the uh, what is effectively a two-dimensional background. So you probably do want to add a little bit of depth of field in there. Uh, you can see the video that I did previously on depth of field up in the top right-hand corner if you're not sure how to do that. Uh, if we continue down on our options, uh, these dome orientations and rotate, well, the dome orientations, there's a couple of other orient, uh, dome orientated things also, uh, which aren't displayed there. They just move the dome around. Sometimes the work do it a lot, sometimes a little. I'm not really going to delve into that. Dome rotation is an important one because uh, not only does that determine what you see behind the model, if you're going to be using uh, the, the image as a background, but importantly as well, also moves the light. This is probably the one that you're going to use all the time. Uh, so if we just do little incremental steps, I just usually go through in increments of 15 looking for the right light uh, and the light that I want. But as you can see, the light itself in the background is rotating. So don't just take the HDRI for you know how it appears when you first load it in. Just rotate it around a little bit just so that you can get the right light and setup that you want. Uh, and on the whole, I think that's really about it. Uh, and yeah, so there we go. That's probably the information you need to get started with HDR images. Uh, those settings, I haven't gone into much detail on there. Like I said, if you need to know about it, just look, drop it down in the comments below and I'll, I'll try and answer whatever questions you've got there. I will might be touching upon some of them in future videos, but uh, for now, what I've gone through there is probably all that you really need to know to get started with HDR. Uh, so yeah, there we go, HDR images. Uh, personally, I always use HDR image in every single image that I do. Uh, I either use it as a primary light source like you see here, or I'll use it just to provide some ambient light with which I add other light into. Most of the time, though, I just use a HDR as a primary light source. Uh, so, yeah, if you've got any questions about uh, HDR images, about anything I've covered in this video, or anything that about DAS whatsoever, just drop it down in the comments below, and I'll get back to you when I can. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if uh, you, you know you got something out of it, and share it around if you possibly can, so that really, really helps me out, as that tells YouTube I'm a little bit better at, at, at this than what I actually am. Uh, and it helps out the channel big time if you do that. So thank you again for watching. Thanks for hanging by. Uh, HDR images, we will do more advanced videos on these very shortly. So hang around and keep your eyes open for that. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye now.